Hey guys, hello everyone. Welcome to Rasan Academy, all of you. So in this short video, we are going to be discussing the importance of the PKA concept and its application. So most of you already have a little idea about what is the PKA and uh, how we are going to uh, basically be able to explain the properties of different molecules, uh, that how they are behaving as an acid or a base in different solutions and so on. First, we have to know about the PKA, right? And also, you must already know that PKA is nothing but the negative logarithm of KA, where KA is considered as an acid dissociation constant, right? So, let's first talk about the pH scale and then we move onwards for our discussion. So, pH scale is nothing but uh, it's uh, able to define, yes, pH is basically also the negative logarithm of H plus, right? That is the H plus concentration. So, if there is a lot of acid, then the pH value is going to be low because it is the negative logarithm, right? So, if it is strongly acidic condition, there is a lot of H plus in the uh, mixture, it's going to be pH 0 or let's say less than 7. And if there is a lot of, or let's say the concentration of H plus is low, then you are going to say the value is between 7 to 14, greater than 7, right? And if it reaches 14, it is going to be strongly basic, like that. So, how is water going to exist at different pH values? Water at pH 7 is going to exist in the neutral form when it takes a lot of protons. All right, see guys, how does water dissociate? The self-ionization uh, of water is something like this, H3O plus plus OH minus, right? So, at pH less than 7, when the pH decreases, you are going to have hydronium ion as the predominant species and when you are having the pH value greater than 7, when the pH increases, you have OH minus hydroxide ion predominating. Okay, so this is the concept of pH, simple. Now, we are going to consider the equilibrium of HA like this, giving you H plus plus A minus. All right, like this. Now, what is H plus, guys? H plus is hydronium ion and A minus is uh, the dissociated acid. So, when you are considering HA as the acid, you also say that A minus is the conjugate base. All right, from the Bronsted acid base theory. Okay, so first thing what you have to notice is when we are considering this equilibrium, yes, we are plotting the percentage of the concentration of the acid as well as the conjugate base versus the pH value. Okay, this is versus pH. So, at low pH, at very, very low pH, what happens is the concentration of H plus is very high. So, at a very high H plus concentration, at a very high H plus concentration, the equilibrium is going to shift backwards and it is going to protonate the A minus. So, you see the green line, as you can see over here, guys, the green line, this one, is for the concentration of the acid and the red line is for the concentration of the conjugate base. Okay. So, mainly when you are having low pH, the A minus is going to stay in the protonated form, mainly as the HA. And when the pH goes on increasing, that is, uh, when the pH goes on going from the acidic to the basic pH, then the HA is deprotonated and mostly gives you A minus like this. Okay. Similarly, what happens is if there is a lot of base, if there is a lot of uh, base when the pH has increased over here, then the equilibrium is going to favor. Yes, if there is a lot of base, let's say OH minus, it is going to favor the formation of A minus. The equilibrium will shift towards this side and you will have maximum concentration of A minus. All right. So, this is about low pH and high pH like this. This is how the equilibrium is going to be. Now, one thing you must have seen guys that there comes a point in the solution phase. There comes a point when the concentration of both the acid and conjugate base will become the same. When is that condition? That condition appears when the pH of the solution has become exactly equals to pKa. So, there are three conditions you might have realized. When the pH is less than pKa, 
right pka is actually negative logarithm of the dissociation constant you know that already so this is how it is calculated you find the ka from the experiment and then you find out negative log of ka is pka value so when the ph is less than pka then the acid is going to remain in the uh, ha protonated form over here this area all right here is when the pH is less than pKa, first condition. Second condition, when the pH is greater than pKa, then most of the acid is going to be in the dissociated form, the, this portion basically, the second part. Okay? And the third part is when the pH is equals to pKa. So, this is the line when you are having the third part over here. This is the dot where you are having the concentration of HA and A minus, both of them same, right? So, just as soon as, as soon as the pKa value is crossed, most of the acid will be having a greater concentration of A minus as compared to HA. You can write it like this as well, all right? So, these three conditions are very important in understanding the relationship of pKa and pH. This three condition, these three conditions will be helpful in studying amino acids as well for considering the isoelectric point and everything. Okay, so now we move onwards to the theory of Bronsted acid and base. Now look over here guys, what is Bronsted acid? What does the Bronsted acid base theory say? That if HA is an acid and A- is the conjugate base, you will see the stronger the acid HA stronger the acid HA, weaker is its conjugate base A minus. Weaker is the conjugate base A minus over here, which means that if the acid wants to dissociate, if the acid is very, very strong, strong acid means it wants to stay dissociated into H plus and A minus. So, the tendency of A minus to get back to HA will be very, very less and that's why it is a weak base because it does not want to accept a proton. And this is the vice versa condition. You can check it out. It is the vice versa condition. Now look at these pKa values guys. From here we are going to understand something really really important. Yes. Yeah, so what is the pKa value guys? Based on the pKa value I can say that it is the 1 upon acidity. Isn't it? Or let's say inversely proportional to acidity. The pKa value. So, lower the pKa value, higher is the acidity. So, HI is more acidic than HCl than H2SO4. This is about the acidity. But when I am talking about the conjugate bases, what is going to be the strength of the conjugate base? Right? I minus is going to be less basic than Cl minus, which is going to be less basic than HSO4 minus. This is the concept. This is the basicity value. And if you have noticed, basicity is directly proportional to pKa. Just like acidity is inversely proportional to pKa value, basicity of the conjugate base, absolutely, is sare conjugate base hai. Basicity of the conjugate base is directly proportional to the pKa value. That is, higher the value, higher is the basicity of conjugate base. Similarly, the leaving group aptitude, we can also predict in all cases, guys, in, it is applicable everywhere. Leaving group ability is also going to be, leaving group ability is also going to be directly proportional to acidity. Stronger the acid, stronger is the leaving group. The conjugate base is a very strong leaving group, right? And the leaving group ability is also inversely proportional to the pKa value. Alright, so all of these three relationships are of utmost importance and they are making the shortest of all the examples. Uh, the shortest of the short tricks for predicting these kind of questions. Now look over here guys, these things, these two examples are of utmost importance over here. Why? Because there is a lot of uh, confusion in the pKa of ammonia, isn't it? That in some books it is given that pKa of ammonia is 33 or 35 and in some other it is given it is 9.5, 9.2 or 10, something like that. So, what is the actual pKa of ammonia? See, as long as you understand, 
as long as you understand that if the pka of ammonia is mentioned at the higher end then it means ammonia is breaking down into amide because ammonia is not a base and that is why it requires a uh, you know a lot of basic uh, condition to remove this proton let's say when the lower value of it uh, pka is given when it is said that uh, pka of ammonia is 9.2 then it is not ammonia it is the ammonium ion which is breaking down to give you ammonia right because this is a stronger acid that's why lower pka value so this has to be kept in mind now what else are we considering based on the pka guys i told you it is directly proportional to the basicity of conjugate base so look over here let's consider methane so when we are able to consider methane and ammonia and water and hf i can directly from here i can say what is the basicity of the bases that i have been using in organic chemistry let's say alkyl lithium let's say sodium amide let's say uh, sodium hydroxide and then sodium fluoride for example fluoride is not a base but anyways yes methane is a poorest acid and that's why the maximum pka value and hf is a strong acid out of all of these and that is why the poorest pka value so this is going to be the order of basicity directly proportional to the basicity directly proportional to the pka value similarly let's look at all the molecules over here starting from hclo the hypohalous acid hypochlorous acid from the perchloric acid every everything now what happens over here is guys directly from the pka value you can consider that hclo4 is the strongest acid having the lowest pka value because the conjugate base is the most stable why the conjugate base is the most stable because it has maximum oxidation state of chlorine and that is why there are a lot of oxygens which can do resonance lot of oxygens which can do resonance and very high oxidation state makes the perchloric acid very acidic so the order is going to be like this down it increases hclo less acidic than hclo2 less than chloric acid less than perchloric acid like that and many more molecules you will be able to explain once you study right now guys in this short video i've just given you an introduction if you can study chapter number 8 from cladden book it will be really awesome this question is directly taken from the solution manual okay chapter number 8 solution manual what does the question say let's see these phenols have approximate pka values of 4 7 9 10 and 11 suggest with explanation which pka value belongs to which phenol now it's a very simple exercise to be done based on the plus i minus i effect or plus r or minus r effect you have to say the acidity and basicity so acidity is inversely proportional to the pka value yes which means stronger acid least value and for your information guys you have to remember some of the pka values let's say you remember the pka value of phenol this is a standard okay similarly these values are standard you have to remember these values as well just two just two of these okay just remember this table and also remember the value of phenol right so that way you will be able to explain all the others yes so there is only one acid just by looking at the plus r and minus r effect let's say this is option number a option number b and c d and e all right so just by looking at all the methyls over here you are able to say that this is going to be less acidic than phenol isn't it because there are so many methyls showing a plus i effect plus i effect is not going to make it more acidic at all so the pka will be 11 yes the only pka which is larger than 10 which means less acidic similarly we have three pka values for less uh, more acidic than phenol right so let's look at let's arrange a b and e a is going to be the most acidic as compared to b which is going to be more acidic than e 
so the values are very evident 4 7 and 9 like this these are all more acidic than phenol because of the minus i and minus r effect so a has the pka value of 4 b has the pk value of 7 and e which only has a minus i effect no minus r will have a value of 9 okay so this is it guys we have uh, solved a very simple question over here we will be doing more important questions till then please study from chapter number 8 just get it done with because we have a lot to talk about and we are going to we are actually studying organic from the very basic in the next video we will be discussing some really important previous year questions and important conceptual questions till then take care of yourself and keep hard working guys keep studying bye everyone we'll see you all in another video